Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today, the equipment autopsy is a Braun Oral-B Professional Care Series electric toothbrush. I've never gotten to take one of these apart before, so I'm kind of excited about this. And obviously the reason it came in for autopsy is right here. Power cord is a little bit chowdered up. But the interconductor looks okay. Let's, let's take a look at that. Well, really, the best way to test the safety of the cord is just we'll set it on a big metal table and just plug it right in, see what happens. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And we'll set this on here. Hey, it charges. Look at that. It's doing stuff. Now, the cool thing, this is, this is going to let us talk about something really cool because you'll notice it's a toothbrush. So it's going to be a low voltage thing. This is why you don't see these with cords on them. That would end bad. So this is a low voltage thing. And the charging thing here is designed to sit next to like a bathroom sink. So there's no metal contacts. If you look on here, it's all plastic. There's, there's no metal contacts anywhere on here. So this has to charge here without there being a direct electrical connection, which tells me it's probably doing that through induction because there's, there's no metal connecting this. And yet we can see the little green light coming on, so it's trying to charge. So, given that the thing probably works, let's see what we can make it not work anymore. So we'll start off at this end. I'm guessing this comes off. Oh, oh, it's icky. Oh, it even works a little bit. It's really covered in gunge. Yeah, it's so gunged up with what I'm guessing, just at first glance, is caked on toothpaste. I'm going to see if I can get you a proper look down inside there. I have some new toys. We got all new tools. And one of the things I've got to play with now is this. This is a Fisher Scientific light source that's designed for use with like a microscope. But it lets me have some really cool fiber optic lights for getting right down into stuff. And I can flip this on. And now I can, I can really light up a specific thing. Here, let me move this to where you'll want it. I can get you right down in there. And that is truly disgusting. So while we're looking at this super close up, let's take a look here and we can see there's a bristle, a, a bristle assembly here. And this rotates. And it's very, very stiff. And I'm guessing there's a little gear in here. So we'll crack this open and we'll get a look inside. And just, but you can see, if you watch here, you can see through a little window, you can see a thing turn. So we've got a max rotation of about 45 degrees, I think. Well, it goes from there, so we'll hold that level, and it goes down to there. So it's almost 90 degrees of rotation. And the more I work this, the more it loosens up. So I think it's supposed to have 90 degrees of rotation. That looks about right. Yeah. So let's crack open the gear drive on this and see what we got in there. Maybe there's a gear. Maybe it's a little flex flexible thing. I don't really know, but we'll figure it out. I'll just set this aside for now. And it appears, I think that's just a pin. This is definitely one of those things that was never designed to be taken apart for repairs or anything like that. This is absolutely a disposable thing. I just want you to realize, if you're ever wondering what I go through for these videos, we got this at like the Salvation Army or something like that. This has obviously spent a considerable amount of time in somebody's face. I don't know who. So in my head, this is Lara Croft's toothbrush, and that's just what I'm going to go with. 
Let's get some tools. Let's start with this and see if this will do for us. There's a little pin right here. When I first saw this, I thought that was a screw and I was like, oh, well, that, that'll be easy. No, it's not a screw, it's just a pin. And I have no idea how to drive that pin out. So there's no way this comes apart without initially breaking something. I'm going to try just levering it. That's not doing what I want. So I'm going to lever it on both sides. So this is a standard set of diagonal cutters, right? You can use these for more than just cutting. These make excellent wire strippers in a pinch. Um, and I know a lot of people that do 90% of the wire. You've, you've seen me in as recently as the past couple episodes strip wires with a pair of these. But you can also use these as a balanced set of wedges. Now it requires a delicate touch because it's really easy to just cut right through something. But if you want to separate these, you can bring these in like this and just slightly squeeze it. And now I'm separating that and can pop the thing right off. And it didn't cut through, it just pulled this out of up in there. And here's a pin. Now this pin Yeah, that's just a little stainless steel pin. It's got schmoo on one side of it. That's our first piece out of there. Now we've got the brush assembly. I think we'd call this the head, which is just a piece of plastic, nothing special. And now, see, I want to try and figure out how this drive system works. I think that's it. I think it's that little rod that vibrates back and forth, and it engages the pin in the end here. So this pin goes down in this hole. This rod smacks against it, and it just wiggles it back and forth. And that's really all there is to it. And that little pin off the top, we saw this pin originally that I thought was a screw. You can see it extends in there. And I can probably just push it right out now. Yeah, there it goes. That's just friction fit in there. So that's just a pin. And we can, we'll just leave that there. There's really nothing to see. And this is just a little shaft. And I'm going to see if I can get this apart to any degree. But I don't think I can pull it out that way. And I'm not entirely sure how they got it in there in the first place. Because if I can't pull it out this end and it doesn't fit in the other end, and this is weird, if I pull on it, watch this. Look, look right here. See this thing here? If I grab this and pull on it, I pull it way, way out like this. Okay, so it's out like a quarter inch. Now watch this. It sucks it back in there. What is this? Why you do this? So, ah, I know how to do it. All right, we'll cut the head clean off. Okay, so we've cut the head off. Now I'll just grab it with a pair of pliers. And it still doesn't come out! Okay. Well, it goes in slowly. So if I let go, I might be able, this is going to be some Indiana Jones mojo. If I let go, I might be able to get back in and under it before it retracts all the way. Yep. All right, so now I'm under it.
and I broke it. But the cool thing is now I can push it out. Let me just go out the other side. I have a little set of drifts. I'm just going to drift this right on through. Rusty's coming out now. I need a bigger banging force. Got all new tools, don't know where anything is. That's up tight. All right, so let's go back to our diagonal cutters. Now these won't let me grab enough here. And that plastic's soft enough, I'm just gonna break it. So. Let's try these. This might do. No, that's all, it's all clicked, glued, fused, schmooed, crusted together. And that's as far apart as that's going to get. So, yeah. Let's get into the main body because this is where the cool stuff's going to be. Yeah. All right, so we've got a little pin driven in down here. No screws. Really wish this had more screws. And it's, it's all sealed. We've got an over-molded part here. This is the, the gummy rubber. This feels like a silicone. And here's our business end. It says the battery's dead. I'm going to see, because I want to get into this. I want it to work once I'm into it, but I don't need it to be pretty. There's no easy way into you. Oh, hey, that just popped right in. I pushed on the little pin down here and it just fell right inside. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh, come off. All right. That balance between don't want to break it and really want inside. Using my little widgy tool to try and wedge that crack open just a bit. And maybe, maybe, maybe I can move because it, it obviously snaps into there. And I don't need to move it a lot. I just need to move it enough. Ah, there. So there's a little trick for you to know. You can use a little plastic widgie to open it up enough to get a screwdriver in to make the whole thing just shoot out the bottom. That's kind of cool. All right. So we've got our bottom piece here, which is covered in gunge and really quite disgusting. But you can see the socket side that sits on this pin here. Like this is very obviously designed to mate to that. Now inside that, we've got a spring which looks like a regular flashlight spring. It's a quite substantial spring for what this is. And now, a coil of wire. 
which is our inductive receiver. So maybe I'll get lucky and I can just pull this whole thing right out the bottom, which would really be awesome if I could get just the whole thing. I don't think I'm going to because it's probably hooked on there somehow. I really want you to come out and say hi. I got a lot of people that want to meet you and they all think you're cool and they want to be your friend and why don't you just come on outside and play? Ah. There's a seam there. But that, I can see a seam line here, but that really looks like something in the mold, like an artistic component, or just this is where the two halves of the mold come together. Because this line here is, is the artistic component. This is where the mold came together. So it isn't like these two pieces can be snapped apart. This is all one piece for now. That could change at any moment. Yeah, I don't I don't think that All right, I'm going to be delicate, and I'm going to try and carve my way up through this. And I can't do that with the tools that I have right here. I don't. Well, maybe, maybe I can just nibble my way up. Oh, you're mine now. Ah! So the whole thing is held in by a soft rubber gland at the top. And if I had to just push down it really hard from the top, which is the very first thing I started to do, it would have just shot right out the bottom. Figured it out. So there's our pile of fun. And here is the inner mechanism, complete with this moving thing here. Now, there's a gear drive that I can see bits of on the bottom. It looks pretty cool. So I'm going to open this up. And we've got a simple DC brush motor spot welded into the metal frame. And will that move too? Let's see, it looks like there's a hinge point here. But the motor's welded in place, so that's not going to work. So let's grab our test lead. Because we've got a little DC motor here and a gear drive, and this probably runs at like, it's probably just a single cell. Yeah, that's, so this is really low voltage. Just going to grab one side with this lead, the other side with that lead. Get some shielding in there so we don't bump the frame. And this should work now. I crank the speed down as low as I can so that you can see the mechanism there. And now you can see, I got to hold it kind of funny, but 
you can see the actual mechanism. I'll slow it down as much as I can. It's not a very high quality mechanism, so I can't get very slow. So there's the mechanism for the toothbrush. And we can see the motor. And there's a cool gear drive in there that I want to get into. But let's see how fast it'll go. Hang on a minute. Ah. Safety squints engaged. Now let's see what it'll take. And that's where we burn something up. Okay. It made it all the way up to about 12, 15 volts, somewhere in there. So it did pretty good. I'm impressed. And I, didn't, I can do that because I knew I just had the motor here and the gear drive. So it wasn't like I was going to have any of the battery side stuff explode if I did that. So let's pop this open and have a look at the gear drive. Hmm. Should be able to pop off these little spot welds just like that. Just work my way down. Okay, so this should get. Yeah, and that just hinges right out of the way. Pull that off. Don't need that. So we've got a roll pin. I like how the whole thing just hinges. And then we've got the motor. And there's a, it like, there's like a suspension system here. There's a couple springs. You can see right here, there's a couple little springs in there. They're not, they're not for an electrical contact. So this is kind of cool. This clips in there, up here. This is a really neat system. The, the back piece of plastic here, this piece of plastic, slides into this housing and there's a clip here, a clip here, a clip here, and nothing there, and one over here. So one, two, three, four clips that retain this in there. So I don't even begin to think I'm gonna be able to get that out of there intact. There's no way I do this without breaking it. So I'll just break it. And now we've got all kinds of fun stuff. Let's examine some of the parts. Because we saw what it looked like all put together. Let's get it all apart and really check it out. Because there's a whole lot of pieces. We'll get those springs out of there because they're catching on stuff. Now this should be able to be worked out. I'm probably going to have to kill this piece of plastic to get it out. If I cut it down, get all those long pieces off, I might be able to work the small piece through, because there's a bearing on the end of that. 
And I want to be friends with this bearing. Sometimes, in order to be friends with someone, you have to cut it off from everything it knows and kill its family. So, we, okay, there we go. Now we've got our prime mover, which is just a little DC brush type electric motor, a little brass gear on the end. We got, yeah, that bearing is in there. It isn't just sitting there, that's actually rammed down in there. So, a little tiny bearing, like something out of a toy helicopter. Now we've got this assembly and there was a little belt and a gear thing which you saw but exploded across the room when I took the thing apart. And now we can take off yet another spring which has grease on it. We've finally gotten to a part that's lubricated. This actually has some grease on it which is very, very well sealed away from any part you're ever going to taste. And we can see this is what it's all about. The whole system, everything we get to ends here. That's the last piece in the chain, is that little moving piece there. So it's all about moving that. So that's the mechanical side. Now let's get into the cool stuff. I'm just going to leave these on because I'm messing with the battery. All right. So this is a coil of wire. And this is our inductive receiver coil here. And it's a nice, pretty coil of shiny copper magnet wire. It connects in here. This is our battery charging circuit. There's a button here. And that's, that's the, uh, well, that's our charge light, but I don't remember what this button did. Um, I think this is like on and off. And then we've got just a single cell battery in here. So we know how batteries work. We know how battery charging circuits work. What I want to talk about is this, because this is the only way, the only way through this thing's entire life cycle that electricity gets into this. Technically, the electrons are already in there and just came that way from the factory, but this moves the electrons. But that's a whole complicated discussion. So what we're going to do is I'm going to very carefully remove the charging coil and set that aside on the charging base, and we'll see what we can measure there. So let's see what we get out of this. On the list, really tiny little pair of dikes. All right, so here's our charging circuit. We don't need any of that. It's just charging circuit and a battery. This is our coil. And I'm going to expand upon this spool here, this little bobbin it's wound on, and open the wires out. So now we've got a coil, which is across, at, at this point it's across between an antenna and a transformer, really. And we got a coil here, so we're gonna see what we get on this. Let's start simple. We'll move that out of the way. So this is plugged in and doing its thing. Now I'm going to grab my meter. Now the trick is we don't know the voltage. We know it's going to be AC because DC wouldn't do anything. If, it, if you had DC on here, you'd just have an electromagnet. So we know it's got to be AC, but we don't know the voltage or the frequency. That could be anything. So I'm just going to throw a voltmeter on it. 
it's a pretty safe bet to say it's under 200 volts. Probably, but we don't know how under. So since I have an unknown voltage, I'm gonna grab a couple test leads because I don't wanna be holding the wire because it's probably not a lot. It's probably like 12 volts, but maybe it's 120 volts. Maybe it steps it down in a thing, I don't know. So for safety, because we don't know, we don't want to mess with a voltage where we don't know what we're getting. So I'm going to clip these on here. Now the first question is we have is, are we sure we have a good connection because it's magnet wire and maybe it's not stripped right? So what we do is we just turn this over to diode. Okay, so we know we've got a good connection. So now we go back to voltage, and I'm going to pick 200. And I'm going to just lift this up a little bit and set this under. Now do we still have a good connection? Yeah. So at 200 volts, it says I have less than one. So let's go to 200 millivolts. It says, I have 167.7 millivolts AC. That, I do not think that's telling me the truth. But it tells me whatever the voltage is, it's small, or the frequency is really high. So, how do we answer this question? I have an idea. I have, I'll take this off of there an oscilloscope. So let's scope it and see what we get. I'm not asking a lot here. Cool, that works. So now I know I've got a good electrical connection. So I can connect this onto our Tired old O-scope. Hi, you coming back? You were with us a minute ago. Hi. Okay, now we put this on there. Hey, 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 look at that. There be a signal. Look at that. So now we can see we're in two volt mode. So these are two volts per centimeter. We can see our waveform. How about that? I never got this thing to work before. So, and I'm just holding this on here so we can see our voltage is really, really low. And it says it's two volts per centimeter on the scale. So I'm at about one, two, and a half. So that's two, four, five volts, which would be about right for charging a little battery like that. It's a five volt inductive power supply. That is so cool. So now we can see the actual signal. So it is AC. That's really neat. And now we've gotten to explore an inductive charging power supply for the first time. See, this is where I wish I was smart as like Dave from EEV blog, because he'd be able to go into all kinds of stuff on that, but he's way more into electronics than I am. I'm not an electronics guy. I just look at that and go, yep, that's AC, and the top of the waveform is kind of pointy. And he could tell you why. So what I can tell you is it's AC, and it's an inductive charging supply, and I'm sure some very smart people will hop in the comments and tell us more about it. But that concludes our autopsy of the little, this is a Braun type 3757. The model number is a mile long, I'm not even gonna try, but it's 50 or 60 hertz, 
0.9 watts, and it's called a personal hygiene appliance. And for anyone who's wondering why I didn't dig into the bottom here, it's because if you look at this, it's entirely just potted a single piece. So there'll be a little step down power supply in there and an inductive coil and probably some kind of like ferrite that comes up the center of this pin. But it's entirely encapsulated and I did not want the nightmare of trying to open that up. I had enough trouble with the other end. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden and we'll see you next time.